the drill press. And uh, it's a variable speed drill press. This control right up here is to change the speed. Now these drill presses in our shop run way too fast, uh, from the fast end. So we always run them right down here, about 450 RPMs, that's revolutions per minute. <coughs> we change the speed here only when the machine is running. This is on our start and stop switch. Down here is called the chuck. Now if we extend it down here, this part in here is called the quill. The thing on the end is called the chuck, and this is what's going to hold your drill bit. This is called the chuck key. The chuck key goes in here, and it opens and closes the jaws of the chuck, so the drill bit can go in here. At first, we can take and just turn this by hand, and we have to open our closes quite a bit, and then we reduce the chuck key to finally tighten it down. When we drill something, we have to have it clamped down. Uh, much of our small items, many of our small items can be held in something like this. This is a machinist vise. It's also a woodworking device available for the, the drill presses. Or sometimes you have to clamp the material directly to the table with some type of clamp, a seed clamp or a wood clamp. When we clamp things in, we have to be aware that we don't want to drill through in, into the clamp or into the table. Now this part here is called a table. And if we have to raise or lower it, we take and use a wrench one here on a chain, we loosen up the, the back part here, it's not going to show up on the camera, but there's two uh, bolts to, uh, nuts on bolts here to loosen up in the back. And when we do that, we have to have two or three people holding the table. You may even want to take this uh, vice off, because this thing probably weighs right around 35, 40 pounds. I'm going to take that off because it's very heavy. With this vice on here, you're probably looking at a weight around 80 to 90 pounds and it can be uh, quite heavy to hold. So you need two or three people to hold this while you loosen it up. And the other thing is when you loosen it, you're gonna probably have to try to wiggle it to get it up. When you use a drill press, I don't know if you're going to be using it for metal or for wood or for plastic. So I'm gonna ask you how to drill a half inch diameter hole in a piece of steel, which is probably the hardest question for it. Now, of course, you're going to need your drill press safety questionnaire and please be sure to read our red equipment notebook on the drill press. It'll show the stuff that I've covered here. It also has another full page in here on how to drill a hole in a piece of metal. Now, when we take metal, this is a piece of angle iron, to hold it. Uh, we would want to drill a hole, or if we want to drill a hole, we have to, of course, figure out where it's going to be. And this assumes that you've got some kind of plan, so you would measure uh, where this hole is supposed to be. Now, this tool is called a scratch off and it is ideal for scratching metal. Uh, you can write on it with a pen or a pencil, but a, a pencil will mark it, but it's a little hard to see because it's uh, roughly the same color as the metal. And a pen is going to be real hard to find a pen that's going to leave a, a mark on the ink. So we, uh, if we want to make a hole right here at nine inches, I can mark it right here. And then we take and use a square. We have several kinds of squares. It's called a combination square. And I'm going to come in here and make my uh, two right angles. It's going to be kind of a plus shape. I'm going to mark that location with two right angles. Then, if I took a drill bit and tried to drill a hole here, uh, we're drilling steel into steel. Now, hopefully, the drill bit is going to be a harder steel, and it has a special alloy formula to do make it harder uh, into this mild steel. But still, it needs some help getting started. So we're going to make a little dent in here. To make that dent, we're going to use a tool called a center punch, uh, similar to a scratch all, but a little heftier. And I'm going to find where I've got my two right angles here that I've scratched in with a scratch all. Then I'm going to hit it. And what I've done here is made a dent. And it's amazing how this small little dent here, which isn't going to really show up on the TV though, will take and make your drill bitting or your drilling a lot easier. Now, when it comes to drilling, we have several kinds of drill bits. These three here are woodworking drill bits. This one, the brand is Greenlee, and it's called a multi-sprue bit because of the uh, little teeth here. This one is called a Forstner uh, bit, that is the brand that uh, the company that developed it. And it uh, drills a nice flat hole. This one here, this multi-sprue, is going to have a little bit of a dent. And this one is called an Irwin speed bore or spade bit. Irwin was the company that originally invented it, spade because it looks a little bit like a shovel. The disadvantage of this drill bit, it has quite a, quite a long, what's called a lead screw, the hole gets started. And it's okay for some holes, but you're going to uh, leave quite a, uh, an extra 
point in your in your wood, and sometimes your wood isn't that thick to be able to do it. So we don't use in this shop this speed bore bit too much. Now, if you're going to drill your CO2 cars, you're probably going to use one of these two. And this Forstner bit uh, goes by numbers. And this one happens to be the one used for a CO2 car. It is a 3 fourths inch, which is what you're supposed to use. But if you're going to read this drill bit, when you get in here and read the numbers, which will show up on TV, it's going to say 12. And 12 stands for 12 sixteenths. So if you follow one of these drill bits, it said 7, it would stand for 7 sixteenths. If it said 14, it would be 14 sixteenths. Now 12 sixteenths, of course, is the same as 3 fourths. 12 sixteenths reduces down to 3 fourths. For this uh, Greenlee multi-sprue bit, it has to be stamped as 3 fourths. And you can read it right down in here, and it says 3 fourths inch. Now, neither one of these drill bits, or this spade drill bit, will work in metal. In fact, if you're going to try to drill metal, not only would you uh, not do the drill bit any good, you would, would actually ruin the drill bit. And both of these right in here are in the vicinity of $20 each. This one is, is a little cheaper, it's under $5. Uh, not only would you damage the drill bit beyond use, you could severely hurt yourself because it's, it's not going to drill into steel and you're putting pressure on it and something's going to give and, and perhaps something starts flying around. So we use a twist drill. There's a set here. And you notice up on my supply counter, there's a set of drill bits. There's no small drill bits there. The small ones, the 5 30 seconds, the 1 8, the 3 16 and the 3 30 seconds are in your locker. Each period has a set of those four drill bits, and each period is responsible for that set. But up here are the bigger sets, including going up to half inch. Now, when you take that safety test, I'm going to ask you how to drill a half inch diameter hole in a piece of steel. And this is the drill bit, but we don't start with this drill bit. And that's because this area right in here is fairly wide. It's about an uh, eighth of an inch wide, and it does not really cut. If you're drilling wood with this kind of drill bit, it's no problem. But when you're drilling steel on steel, it is a problem. So we have to start with a smaller drill bit. Now, when I take and drill this half-inch diameter hole, I'm going to start with what is called a pilot drill, which uh, makes a pilot hole. Normally, the pilot drill is the size of this solid part here between the grooves or slots in the drill bit. In this case, I'm going to use a 1 8 inch drill bit. So I'll take and drill this hole with 1 8 inch drill bit, then I can drill it with the half inch drill bit. Now when I get ready to drill my hole here, I'm drilling in metal, so I'm using the, the uh, metal drill bits, the, the twist drill bits. And I'm going to drill right in here. It does not show up, but there are my two cross, cross lines, my two 90 degree uh, right angle lines, and then my center punch. I'll put it in here and uh, tighten it down good and tight. Now we have to get the drill bit in here. I'm going to start with this pilot drill first, and it's going to go in here into the chuck. Now, to continue opening this up, we're going to, I'm going counterclockwise. And sometimes this one is uh, a little stubborn. Usually you can open up my hand by grabbing here. Just turning it back. Our drill bit goes in here. And we're going to tighten it up again by hand. I'm going clockwise there. Tighten it up. Now you never leave the chuck in here and turn the power on. It will tend to swing out and hit you probably about in the chest area. And it uh, probably won't kill you, but it's a real devastating and very hard hit. Now I need to line this up. And I'm going to bring with my handle down and get this right on top of that little center punch mark right there. And I've got my, my motor already is set to 450, but I'll turn the power on. Drill my hole. Turn it off. Then I'm going to change drill bits. I'm going to take this one out and then put the half inch drill bit in. The capacity of this chuck is a half inch. I mean, that's the biggest drill bit it's going to take. I have some drill bits that are not out that are bigger than a half inch, but the shank up here, the part that goes in the chuck, is a half inch. I'm going to tighten this in. And I had to open this up all the way to get this drill bit in. Tighten it in. And I'm going to take and line this up again and uh, get it right on top of that pilot hole. I'm going to drill my hole. Now, usually in steel, we use something called cutting oil. Cutting oil is not normally out we do very little drilling in metal. But if I do that, and if this metal was very, was hardly, was any thicker, that I would want to get the cutting oil out. And there we have, now 
Now these chips are hot. You could burn yourself. Notice I had to hold on to this when I was drilling, but now we have our half inch diameter hole in a piece of steel. So again, to do that, we're going to use a, a, a square and lay out our two right angles. We're going to center punch it, and then we're going to uh, use a pilot drill, which is somewhat smaller than 3 eighths of an inch. The general rule is that you uh, use a pilot drill when your hole that you're drilling, this hole here is bigger than a half inch, is a bigger than 3 eighths of an inch. So we have to use our pilot drill, which is the size of our solid part of our drill bit down here and then we use the actual size of drill that we're going to use. Now this drill bit is an eighth inch. It makes an eighth inch diameter or wide hole. This one is a half inch drill bit. It makes a half inch wide or half inch diameter hole. One other thing, when you're drilling wood or plastic, you also need to mark that location. You use the same type of thing. This is a combination square, or you can use a tri-square to make your, your right angles to mark that location. And then normally in wood and plastic, you use a scratch awl to make a little dent. And with a scratch awl, when you're marking in wood and plastic, you normally take and hit it with the palm of your hand. Uh, the wood and plastic is considerably softer than metal, so you don't normally have to use a hammer. But you do have to mark that location before you drill. This is the end of this videotape.